a black kid and a white kid does exactly the same thing. The penalties when you're 10, the black kid gets suspended, the white kid, someone helps. Someone says, hey, this kid's struggling, I think they need to see a counselor, obviously something's wrong at home, let's get the kid some help. Uh, the, the, the data is just uh, devastating, the expulsions, the suspensions, uh, there's a view that these kids are dangerous that's not backed up by the reality of their actions. But let me, let me not pretend that we don't have some young people who are out of control. So you have a very small number who actually are out of control, but a huge number of kids are treated as if they're that very small number. And so this disproportionate sort of punishment for kids uh, is really a challenge. Uh, you know, one of the things that happens uh, in this country uh, is every time you see a uh, shooting in a suburban school uh, and makes the news and everybody's all aghast, oh my God, look what happened, and it's terrible because it is terrible. Uh, but then when you talk to the uh, leaders of that community, the first thing they tell you is tomorrow we're going to have counselors in for all of our kids because we know how devastating. I don't ever hear of a counselor coming in to an inner city school when there's a shooting, right? There's, there's this assumption that this is normal. These kids can handle this. Well, let me tell you something. If soldiers who have been trained for war can't do a year in a combat zone without suffering really serious emotional trauma, how can you have thousands of young people from eight, nine, and 10 experience this and think it's gonna have no impact. So part of what we have to do is we just have to really stop treating these kids, right, as if they're anything other than kids. They need uh, support, they need help, uh, they need the guidance of people who care about them, and yes, they make mistakes, but the answer to the mistake ought to be professional support and help. So one of the things I think are the mental health supports are absolutely critical, but we also have to break down this belief system that's so quick, right, to say to that kid, you know, you're, you're a criminal or you're a bad student. Here's one of the challenges in life. Young people have nobody to forgive them, right? All of us have done bad things. Well, maybe you have and I have, right? And, and so you get defined, you steal something and someone calls you a thief. Who forgives you and allows you to become honest again? When you begin to take these young people and isolate them and just punish them and they get no chance for redemption, they begin to then act as if, well, everybody else has given up on me, I might as well give up on myself. So I think this idea of how do we form these relationships, how do we bring the healing, how do we make sure that we don't just accuse these young people and toss them aside is one of the ways that we've got to start on this.